Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinkerer Studio. Welcome to the seventh tutorial of the 3D Game Assets series. In this tutorial, we will be modeling a low poly nuclear power plant asset. This tutorial series assumes that you know the basics of Blender modeling. If you are new to Blender, I would recommend viewing my Blender Basics course before beginning this series. Let's begin with the base. Make sure that you are in Cycles Render. Go into Orthographic and Front View and tab into Edit Mode. Move the cube, which will be our base, up along the Z-axis 1 Blender Unit. Select the top face and move it down along the z-axis until it's about three-tenths of a blender unit from the bottom. Now go ahead and select the entire base. Scale it all along the x-axis by 5 and scale it along the y-axis by 10. Then in top view, we want to add five vertical loop cuts. And 14 horizontal loop cuts. Now let's start working on the cooling tower. Go ahead and add a cylinder. Change the vertices to 16. And then move it up along the Z axis by 1.3 blender units. In top view, go ahead and move the cooling tower until it is centered over the third and fourth faces on the left bottom of the plane. Select the top face of the cooling tower and then move it down along the z-axis until it's about half a blender unit tall. Then go ahead and scale this top face along the x and y axes by 0.8. Then extrude it up along the z-axis by 1. Then scale this top face along the x and y axes by 0.8. Extrude it up along the z-axis by 1. Then extrude this top face again along the z-axis by 0.2 and then extrude it one more time along the z-axis by 0.1. Then go ahead and delete this top face. Go ahead and select the entire cooling tower. We want to make two duplicates of it and go ahead and move it along the y-axis leaving about a blender unit in between each of the cooling towers. So now let's make the control room building. Go ahead and make sure that you're still in top view. That you want to select the four center faces along this top part of the base. Skipping these two on the end. Go ahead and select the second, the third, and the fourth rows of these faces. Go into the right side view and extrude the faces along the z-axis by 3. Now go ahead 
and move the model so you can actually see the top of the building here. And what we need to do is add three horizontal and three vertical cuts to each of these sections of faces. Then go ahead and select the outer rows and columns of faces on the very top. Then once you have all of these faces selected, extrude them along the z-axis by 0.1. Now we need to select these six outer faces on the top of the roof. We're going to do this in the second and fourth rows from the left and second and fourth rows from the right. Once you have them selected, extrude them along the z-axis by 0.2. Then we're going to select these six center faces that are in the seventh and eighth rows, right in the center of the roof. Then after you have them selected, extrude them along the z-axis by 0.3. Go into front view. And we want to add a horizontal loop cut and then move it down until it's about a blender unit from the very bottom of the building. Then we need to make a vertical loop cut to this right center face. Then move it to the right until it's about a tenth of a blender unit from the loop cut that's already there. Then go ahead and do the same thing on the left center face. Then we're going to add another horizontal loop cut in between these two horizontal loop cuts. And then we need to move it up until it's about a tenth of a blender unit from this very top loop cut. Then we're going to add another loop cut and move it down till it's about a tenth of a blender unit from the bottom. Then select these two center faces, which are going to just act as doors, and extrude them along the y axis by 0.1. Now go on the right side view. Go ahead and add a horizontal loop cut and then move it up until it's about half of a blender unit from the very top of the building. Then we need to select these individual faces excluding the two outer faces. And on each one we're going to inset the face by 0.08. Then once you have all of them inset, go ahead and select all of these faces. And then extrude them along the x-axis by negative 0.1.
Then go into the left side view and we're going to do the same exact thing on the left side. Inset each face by 0.08. Then go ahead and select all of these interfaces. And extrude them along the X axis by 0.1. Go to the front view. Then what we want to do is select these five faces on the right side, skipping the one on the outer end and the one towards the door. And again, we're going to go ahead and inset them by 0 0.08. Then go ahead and do the same thing on the left side. Then go ahead and select all of these center faces. Then we're going to extrude them along the Y by 0.1. Now we're going to go ahead and make a silo. So add a cylinder. Make sure it has 16 vertices. Then move it up along the z-axis by 1.3 blender units. Then go ahead and scale the silo along the x and y axes by 0.7. Select the top face and delete it. Then go ahead and select the entire silo. Go ahead and align this with this third cooling tower. Just leave about a blender unit in between. Now go ahead and add a UV sphere and change the segments to 16. And then go ahead and move it up above the silo. Then go ahead and go into wireframe mode. And then we want to select all of the faces on this UV sphere except for these top three rows. And go ahead and delete them. And then go ahead and center this roof over the silo. and then move the roof down on top of the silo. Now go ahead and duplicate the silo and the silo roof and move it along the y-axis. Again, leave about a blender unit in between each of them. Now we're going to make our first out building. So we're going to want to select five faces on the right side of the base. Skip this large face right here and the face is right in front of the building that we made. We need two rows of these faces. And go ahead and extrude them up along the z-axis by 1. Go ahead and add two horizontal loop cuts. Then move them down until the bottom one's about a tenth of a blender unit from the bottom of the building. Then in the front center of the building, we're going to go ahead and add two vertical loop cuts. And then scale them along the x-axis by 2.
go ahead and add another horizontal loop cut and move it so it's about a tenth of a blender unit from this very top horizontal loop cut that we already made. Select this center face, which is going to be our door, and extrude it along the y-axis by 0.1. Let's add another cylinder. Make sure it has 16 vertices and the cap fill is set to nothing. And move it up along the z-axis by 1.3 blender units. Go ahead and rotate this second building around the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then we need to delete the faces except for these top six center faces. And go ahead and select what is going to be our second building and move it in front of the building that we just made. Make it the same height. And leave a blender unit in between each of them. Go ahead and add two horizontal loop cuts and scale them along the y-axis by 2.6. Then select the second outbuilding again and extrude it along the z-axis by 0.05. Then go ahead and we're going to select the bottom of these edge loops. A quick way of doing this is hitting your Alt key and then your Alt and Shift for the second one. Then hold your Shift key down and deselect the top portion of this edge loop. You can also go into wireframe and select the bottom portion. I found this to be a little bit easier. Okay, now you should have the bottom of the edge loop selected. Then go ahead and extrude these edges down along the z-axis by negative 0.3 then scale the edges along the z-axis by 0 then extrude them down along the z-axis again by negative 0.45 then go ahead and select these right edges and fill in a face and do the same thing on the left side. Now hit your A key and select the entire model. And then under shading and UVs, hit recalculate. And this will just make sure that all the normals are facing the correct way. Go ahead and select the two center front faces and inset them by 0 0.009 then extrude these two faces along the y-axis by 0 0.05 then select the entire second outbuilding that we just made duplicate it then move the duplicated building along the y-axis, leaving about one and a half blender units between the two buildings. And 
Now we're just going to make a real simple fence. So add a cube and move it up along the z-axis by 1.3 blender units. Then scale the fence along the x and y axes by 0.1. And select the very top face and move it down until the fence post is about a blender unit high. Go into top view and make sure you select the entire fence post and then move it down and to the right and we're going to place it on this first edge loop on the right and just center over this edge loop right here. Then go ahead and add two horizontal and two vertical loop cuts to the fence post. Then what we need to do is select the entire fence post duplicate it and move it along the y-axis. You'll need about nine of these. What we're going to do is move them along the y-axis until they fill up the space. We can do this by moving them and leaving about two blender units between the duplicates. go ahead and select all of these fence posts and we'll move them out until there are a few tenths of a blender unit from the very edge. Go ahead and duplicate them and then move them over to the left side. Again about three tenths of a blender unit from the very edge. Then go to the back of the base Select one of the fence posts, duplicate it, and we're going to want to make four of these. Just leave a couple blender units between each of them. And just center them as best as you can. And go to the very front and select this center face of the rightmost post. Then go ahead and extrude it along the y axis until it reaches the front of the base. And go ahead and select the back center face of this fence post, the front center face of the post behind it. Hit your W key and go to Bridge Edge Loops. And we need to repeat this until we do it around the entire base.
Okay, then once you have your fence done, it's time to put some materials on this model. Go ahead and open your materials tab. Make a new material and we'll just call it building. Give it a tan color. I'm going to use the hex code of C2 B D A1. Then we need to select the buildings, the silos, and the cooling towers and assign the building material to them. Now make a new material, and we're just going to call it door. And we're going to go ahead and give it a gray color. I'm just using hex code of all nines. Then go ahead and select the doors on all of the buildings and assign this material. Now make a new material, we'll call it window, and we're going to assign a light tan color to it. I'm using the hex code of E7, E2, C0. Then select these windows on the control room building and assign the material. Now let's make a new material. We'll just name this Accent. And we're going to give it a red color. I'm using the hex code of B32D2A. Then we want to select the silo roofs. And then these row of faces, the second to the top row of faces on the cooling towers. And assign the material. Make a new material. We'll name it Fence. And we're going to give this a gray color. I'm just going to use all nines for the hex code. Then go ahead and select the entire fence and assign the material. Make a new material. We'll call this sidewalk. and we're going to give it a light gray color. I'm going to use the hex code of CF, CF, CF. Then we want to select the faces in front of all the doors and around the silos and the cooling towers.
make a new material and we'll call this pavement and give it a dark gray color using the hex code of 4A, 4A, 4A. We want to assign this to the central faces of the base and make sure that you get the faces on the edge and on the bottom that are corresponding to the ones on the top and then assign the pavement color to them. Make a new material, name it grass, give it a green color. I'm going to use the hex code of 8ECF56. And then assign this material to the rest of the base. tab into object mode and delete the default material then tap back into edit mode go ahead and split the 3D viewport into three sections Change the top viewport into the node editor and change the bottom one into the UV editor. Hit A to select the entire model. Hit your space bar and search for light map pack. Check new UV map change the image size to 1024 click on the new button at the bottom of the UV section and give the map a name Make sure that you have the building materials selected. Then in the node editor, go to add texture, image texture. Click on the arrows and open up the UV that you just named copy this node and then go to each of your materials and paste in this node then under your world tab go ahead and choose ambient occlusion this will give us a nice overall light under your render tab go all the way down to where it says bake twirl that open and you can leave the bake type as combined since this is all flat color 
then go ahead and hit bake. Once your baking is done, make sure that you go to image, then save as image. This way you'll have your UV map and once you quit Blender, the UV map will go away. So there's your very basic low poly nuclear power plant game asset. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day.